Rocket hardware is always the main character in space launch shows. Any company that has a lot of rocket hardware will demonstrate abundant and powerful launch services that no one can match. SpaceX is such a company. Recently, NASA Artemis teams are shocked by SpaceX with a new tour at Starbase to discover all Starship's hardware. This is something we've never seen before. Find out everything about this and more in today's episode of Alpha Tech. What SpaceX just did at Starbase totally shocked NASA's Artemis teams. SpaceX, led by Elon Musk, has once again demonstrated its eagerness to launch the Starship, the most powerful rocket ever built this month. The company released a photo of the Starbase Mega Bay where four super heavy boosters appear to be prepared for launch. This marks the first time in history that Mega Bay houses B-10, B-11, B-12, and B-13. Super heavy boosters for the next three flights with a fourth ready to stack in the Starbase Mega Bay, SpaceX wrote in the post. The magnitude of the operation is truly remarkable as massive stainless steel cylinders dominate the entire building, reaching almost to the ceiling. This offers a revealing look into the hardware-intensive setting that defines SpaceX's rocket manufacturing and launch activities. It serves as a clear testament to the company's bold vision and unwavering commitment to pushing the boundaries of innovation within the aerospace industry. This image seems to reveal an additional crucial detail. According to the speculation of the majority of the space community, this publicly released pictures were taken during the latest visit by NASA officials while reviewing the progress on the infrastructure for SpaceX's human landing system program in South Texas. Earlier on February 2nd, Lisa Watson Morgan, the program manager of NASA's human landing system, mentioned on LinkedIn and expressed her joy about the excellent results of her trip. Had a fantastic trip to South Texas to see remarkable progress on infrastructure for SpaceX in relation to the Human Landing System program, part of the overall Artemis enterprise, returning humans to the moon. In attendance were the leadership of Headquarters Exploration Systems and Moon to Mars. Significant progress in six months was the high point in addition to seeing the functioning life support mock-up for future lunar missions. This has demonstrated a positive outlook from the leadership of the United States Space Agency. If you are someone who regularly follows space news, it's not strange that NASA always reports delays in the Artemis program, and the factor causing this delay is SpaceX's Starship program. However, with Lisa Watson Morgan's remarks during the trip, everything seems very positive, especially the development of new tests for the life support module, a crucial aspect of the return to the moon. Six months ago, a nose cone labeled HLS appeared at Starbase. Not only was it painted the characteristic white for HLS spacecraft prototypes, but it also featured an entry window along with complex electronic devices beneath. There were numerous speculations about subsequent tests for this model shortly after, but SpaceX's actions were discreet, making it challenging to track. Nevertheless, with this latest disclosure, we can now be confident that SpaceX's tests with the HLS model have been remarkably successful. It was an unexpected development. In addition to that, the speed of construction for the new tower on the site and the transportation of four tower segments from Florida to Texas are also pretty noteworthy. This marks perhaps the largest transport of tower segments since SpaceX's November efforts, demonstrating accelerated efforts in constructing the second launch tower at Starbase. It'd be no surprise if this launch tower could be completed by the end of this year, and it might even be operational as we enter the new year. The one thing that I really appreciate about SpaceX is they want to move fast at all costs until they get to the crew mission, said Lisa Watson Morgan. SpaceX is not only accelerating the construction of the launch tower, but is also swiftly progressing with a model that's hardware-rich, with multiple Starship and Super Heavy rockets in preparation for launch in South Texas. This contrasts with NASA's traditional rocket development approach. SpaceX prioritizes rapid iteration and testing throughout extended design phases. Instead of investing significant time in perfecting a single prototype, they construct multiple versions and subject them to various tests. This iterative process allows them to create the best possible design, rigorously testing it, even to the point of failure, and then iterating based on collected data. It's always better to sacrifice hardware rather than sacrifice time, Musk said. Time is the one true currency, the fastest path to a rapidly reusable, reliable rocket. This means SpaceX is poised to launch Starship a lot. They have told us maybe up to 10 flight tests this year, only one of which is a milestone on our contract, Watson Morgan said. As part of NASA's program to return humans to the moon, NASA officials are increasingly closely monitoring SpaceX's progress on Starship in the upcoming launch. An important milestone for NASA's Artemis program this year involves a demonstration of propellant transfer between spacecraft. In this scenario, 
Two Starship vehicles will rendezvous in orbit to showcase SpaceX's capability to transfer hundreds of gallons of superchill propellant from one vehicle to another. These tests will help SpaceX and NASA determine the number of tanker spacecraft needed to fuel a Starship mission to the Moon. Starship will come in various configurations, such as lunar landers, tanker spacecraft, fuel storage modules, and satellite deployment vehicles. However, all will share the same fundamental design, featuring Raptor engines and a stainless steel structure. Terms in NASA's Starship Lunar Lander contract mandate SpaceX to use two Super Heavy boosters, four tanker starships, and one storage starship, along with one Lunar Lander starship for each Artemis launch campaign. According to Watson Morgan, SpaceX will also manufacture a backup Super Heavy booster and two backup tanker starships to support each Artemis mission. SpaceX plans to deploy reusable Super Heavy boosters and tanker starships into orbit to conduct a series of launches, refilling the Starship propellant depot in space. The company will demonstrate all these capabilities with an uncrewed Starship landing test before Artemis 3. SpaceX will need at least two operational Starship launch pads to accomplish this. We're doing an uncrewed demo, and they have to prove out their landing, and they go back up, and we may potentially have a relanding, Watson Morgan said. Before we take a crew on there, they're going to have to successfully autonomously land this vehicle on the moon. Once Starship gets to the moon, the NASA astronauts will ride an elevator from their cabin near the top of the vehicle towering some 164 feet 50 meters above the ground, down to the lunar surface. NASA astronauts recently participated in a test of prototype Starship elevator. We got a lot of work to do on that elevator, but we'll get there, Watson Morgan said. Landing such a tall spacecraft at a potentially uneven touchdown site near the moon's south pole has also raised questions about stability. Could Starship tip over? Watson Morgan said this is definitely one of the issues that we're concerned about regarding Starship, but she added there's good reason to have confidence in the design. Starship's stability during landings influenced by its center of gravity, determined by the amount of propellant used in the journey to the moon and the final descent to the surface. Additionally, the landing legs of Starship possess the capability to articulate and adjust for uneven terrain. Musk mentioned that SpaceX is working on enhanced Starship versions, referred to as version 2 and version 3, designed for improved performance and endurance. Notably, Starship version 3 will feature increased height, stretching the world's largest rocket from its current 121 meters to 140 meters or beyond. According to Musk, the enhancements may potentially double Starship's payload lift capacity, increasing it from around 100 metric tons to over 200 metric tons per flight. SpaceX's primary intentions for Starship's operational use appear to revolve around deploying Starlink satellites and facilitating lunar missions for NASA. In order for the Artemis program to succeed, we must succeed with Starship, Elon Musk said. That's all for today's episode. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please let us know what you think in the comment section below. Your feedback is very important to us and helps make better videos for you to watch. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.